to know what happens when a turnaround story stock hits a bump in the road. Take a look today at Groupon, the online marketplace that helps connect people with all sorts of local deals. After spending a long time in the wilderness, Groupon finally seemed to be executing a comeback. And as of yesterday, its stock was up more than 70% year to date, trading up to $5.26. Then last time we got two pieces of news. Groupon reported, and the company also announced it was acquiring its rival, Living Social, for an undisclosed sum. The result? The stock got taken to the woodshed today, losing more than 20% of its value. What was so bad about the quarter? Well, it, actually, frankly, it, it's a little hard to say. Groupon's top and, uh, line and bottom line numbers were both slightly better than expected. Companies growing its user base and rationalizing its global footprint. However, the living social deal will make it harder, maybe, to, for them to turn a profit, at least in the near term. Uh, I think the real reason the stocks got hit today is that it had run up dramatically going into the quarter. In other words, it was priced for perfection. And what we got was merely good. So should we view this pullback as a potential buying opportunity, or do we need to worry that maybe the turnaround's losing steam? Let's check in with Rich Williams. He's the CEO of Groupon and the architect of the recent turn. Get a better sense of the results and where the company's headed. Mr. Williams, welcome to Man Money. Good to see you, Thank sir. You. Good to see you. you. Thanks for having me. I mean, you heard what I just said. I mean, honestly, I spent most of the day trying to figure out what everybody yeah. hated about yeah. it, and I decided that there wasn't anything everybody hated about it, <laughs> except for the fact that it had gone up a lot, and people yeah. thought, you know what, this is time to be able to ring the register. Uh, I mean, your, your guess is as good as mine yeah. on that one. I, I You know, I, I looked at it. It's been a little bit confusing. I think you know, we, had a, we had a strong performance, I think oh. you, as you said, and the, the fundamentals in the business are, are showing great progress. Um, and as we look at our execution against our strategy, right. we'd say we're on track. So, I, you know, I think maybe there was some some fast money moving out and, and some some perfection expected. Right. Um, and, but I think we delivered solid results. Yeah, I mean, I, look, I thought typical of the research I was Credit Suisse that yeah. did a good job. They said in line third quarter uh, 16 results expect gradual progress on turnaround. And I think mm. that that people might have expected instant progress on turnaround. And you've never <laughs> promised. That. I've looked at no. everything you said. Yeah. You've never promised that. I have not, and you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a really simple guy, I'm a practical guy. Most people that set out on the magnitude of change that we set out end up having conversations about roads to recovery that are years long. Right. And you know, when we set out, we said this wasn't gonna be instant, it's mm -hmm. not gonna be simple, but in that, in that path, we've also delivered now four quarters of really steady progress. I mean, you look at our North American right. local business, our core business, accelerating over the last three right. quarters. And I'd say, you know, most people, again, in that space of saying, this is going to take a while, we've said, it's going to take a while, but you're going to see progress along the way. So okay. we've been clear about that. All right. Now, you made the acquisition of Living Social. I, yeah. I, I, you said, I think, pretty much when I asked you this, that it, it undisclosed some, but yeah. it, to some that was rather radical. But I think yeah. the more radical thing was to be able to sell some things that you owned or mm. shut things that you owned, and that Living Social actually fits into your core mission. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. I, you know, when, when, when I took over the job uh, now a year ago, I, I basically said, look, we're going to do four things. We're going to simplify our lives. And that one of, that, one of those things... you did have is, a lot of stuff that was hard to understand. We had a lot of stuff. Um, one, and one of those key strategic pillars was to simplify and streamline the business. And that meant removing some, some businesses that weren't core. Okay. Um, and when we did that, we also said, we're going to continue to be opportunistic on M&A. We're not going to, we believe we can do both. We believe right. we can be smart operators and, and also acquire companies as long as they pass a very high bar. And that high bar was, again, simple. It said, they have to be on strategy. They'd be within those which, four which things. Which living social, certainly. And it has to be down the middle with where our focus areas okay. are, and that's North American local. And it passes that bar. It, didn't it, it wasn't like that, well, you said, oh, geez, it was once worth six billion. We'll scoop it up here. I mean, it was more like it fit. <laughs> and when I'm saying it was not material, what I'm saying yeah. is that, that the reason I mentioned that is because you know, I was looking at your cash position. I mean, you have, you know, you have, six, you have $870 million, 33, mm -hmm. almost 40% of your market cap. Yeah. I have to believe that that wasn't dinged substantially by buying Living Social. I mean, it was, it was a non-material acquisition. Well, so, yeah. you know, we're, we look at that in multiple ways, both the, the financial side and now with what we know about integrating businesses and, and operating this business well, we don't see it as a material distraction from our day-to-day -day operations. And you know, we very much looked at this deal as, can we acquire a significant number of customers at a cost of acquisition that right. we think is, is effective? Right. And, this was and, a and return on investment acquisition. Right. You've made a decision that this could That's boost right. ROI next year? Exactly. I mean, we look at it just like any customer right. acquisition okay. we do, which is 12 to 18 month horizon. Is it going to pay us back on a right. gross profit basis? And in this case, we, we feel strongly that it will. And you obviously must feel that way about uh, advertising on TV because I'm uh, seeing those. We do. We do. I mean, you know, we we've been quiet in that world for years. Right. And, and I think, you know, it was time to get back on the air. It was time to start educating people about how Groupon's changed. Um, and we've seen great response to that. You have, but, tell me. Tell me yeah. what do you mean by that? So we've seen that it can be an effective customer acquisition 
acquisition channel for us. And when I say effective, uh, I'm putting the brand stuff aside. I'm okay. saying if we measure it, and we, do we see the ROI that we need to see? And we measure it like every channel we operate in, and we're seeing that. We can acquire a good-sized number of customers at a CAC or a, you know, an ROI that we think is really solid. Um, so we treat it exactly like every other channel we operate in, and it happens to have those extra benefits of teaching people what's new at Groupon. But you know, Rich, you're a, a regular guy. And Regular. you're one guy trying to turn around a big company. Yeah. I wonder, even if there were terrific, and I know you're going to say there yeah. are, international markets, would it be better just because the thing got so far yeah. flung, just say, okay, listen, I'm going to spin out international markets, focus domestic, because yeah. the opportunity is pretty great domestically. Yeah, I mean, we, we went through every country that we operate in, yeah. and, and we put them through what I think is the right framework. We basically said, do we have a strong competitive position in the market? Does the market have characteristics that we like? Does it have strong mobile penetration? Right. Is it a connected market? Does it have a, a mature e-commerce marketplace? Um, and do we believe we have investment characteristics that make sense there? Net, do we think we can win? And, and where we didn't believe we could win, we made the hard call, cut them out. Where we are now, we think we have a good winning formula. We've, we believe they can support investment long term and they can be good, solid business. Okay, one last question. It, it's yeah. really unnerving when I mention Groupon. You know, yeah. I said, I think they've bottomed. They made the joke yeah. to David. I said, no, David, I think they have <laughs> bottomed. Uh, people people may said, Jim, uh, Google, yeah. could ch Google could wreck them in a day. They, yeah. they put them out of business day. What do you do when you, when you hear that? Like, oh, I well, think I just wipe them out in a day. You know, I hear that all the time. Right? I mean, that's um, the rap. I hear, at least I hear that in, in, you know, the media, in the right. media side. I don't really hear that from customers. But yeah. I, I think that the big thing you have there is, is context. And, and I think it's the challenge that you have with Google. We, you know, we, or anyone else that has a different kind of context. Mm -hmm. People go to Google to find stuff. People go to Groupon to buy locally. Right. It's different. And, you know, it's a different animal. Now, we don't have their scale. We're acquiring scale right. as fast as we possibly can. But when people think of Groupon, they think, I'm going to go find a great restaurant. I'm going to go find a great spa. I'm going to do something with my kids this weekend. I'm going to save a ton of money. Changing that, incredibly, incredibly hard to do. All right. That's it. We'll leave it at that. And oh. answered a lot of my questions. I great. really appreciate it. Answered all my questions. That's Groupon CEO Rich Williams. I think his stock is really interesting down so badly today because there wasn't anything in it that should have made it go down like that. Mad Money's back in the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.